Archaeologists digging in the Italian volcano city of Pompeii are calling their latest discovery a sorcerer's treasure trove. The researchers uncovered a charred box that was filled with crystals, gems, dolls and even a tiny skull. Experts believe the original owner was likely a slave who used these objects for rituals to seek good omens. For more on this, we have with us Seth Bernard. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Classics at the University of Toronto. Hello, Seth. Thanks for joining us. Hi, actually. Thanks for having me tonight. So what do you make of this discovery? It seems like quite a treasure trove indeed. It's fantastic. It's yet another fantastic thing coming out of Pompeii. Uh, credit's really due to the superintendent of the site right now, Massimo Sana, who's been discovering one sort of sensational thing after another. So it's, it's really great. Yeah. And what do you make of these, these findings, these articles, items that have been found? What, what are these and how expensive are they? How rare are they? What could they have been used for? Well, they are, they're exotic, right? They're, they're special materials. They're amber, they're faience, which is a sort of porcelain, which comes from Egypt. Um, they are shells. Uh, it's such an eclectic mix of stuff that I think uh, right now people are saying that this is, these are magical items. They're involved in some sort of ritual. And I think that's as, as good a guess as we're going to get for now. Um, it, it's a very strange assemblage of uh, little statuettes, little figurines, as you said, uh, a little skull, um, various sort of, <laughs> odd objects. So, so magic seems like a, a decent guess, I think. You know, the skull is one thing that really catches my eye. It's a tiny little skull, as we've been showing on the images as well. So one would imagine, like you said, used for some sort of ceremonies or rituals, perhaps, in the olden times. Do we know how old this treasure trove would be? I don't know they were necessarily much older. The, the, it doesn't have to have been antiquities, uh, at least older than the eruption, than the 70s uh, AD. Um, but, uh, you know, we have a lot of textual evidence. We have a lot of sources that talk about these rituals where you use wax figurines or dolls or uh, little things like this to, uh, to um, bring down uh, anger on a, on a jealous lover or to attract someone you're attracted to or to safeguard a birth or a marriage or these things. So the idea that these little trinkets are involved in those sorts of rituals uh, is attractive. You know, these objects have been described as being used as a woman. How is that really known? Is it just because they are beautiful gems? Or how would a woman be using them? Yeah, it's a good question. So, uh, you know, uh, there are two things going on here. One, there are a couple objects that look like they belong to a woman's vanity. Um, some things that look like they're part of a necklace where the rope, the, the cord connecting them has been destroyed. There are also some things called spindle whorls, which you use to, to make thread. You take wool and make thread. These are women's objects. We usually uh, um, associate them with a the women's cabinet. Uh, but the other thing going on here is that magic is often seen as marginal, as subversive, as a sort of uh, something done by marginal figures in the Roman world. These can be women, older women, whom we mm. know to have been sorceresses, uh, slaves, things like that. So I think that's also uh, coming in in the association here. You know, Seth, when we look at these images and all of them really displayed, uh, they are of different shapes and sizes, different colors, different kinds of texture on these little gems. Does it mean that they would have been collected over a period of time and they belong to different parts of the world? What's your assessment on that? It's certainly these objects are connecting whoever owned them to different parts of the world. There's a lot of stuff here that's connected to Egypt and Egyptian cult. Uh, there's a little statuette of Harpo uh, Har Har Harpocrates, uh, who's an Egyptian deity. There are things here coming from the Isis cult. Um, uh, the amber is a foreign object. There's a lot here that's telling you that someone has uh, access to exotic items, exotic goods coming from all over the empire. There's a lot here speaking to that fact that in the Roman world, in the 70s AD, in Italy, mm -hmm. trade routes were just bringing stuff from all over the Mediterranean and beyond uh, into Italy all over. So, so okay. you're seeing part of that sort of global world that is Rome here in, in this little one assemblage. All right. Fascinating find and conversation. Seth Bernard, Assistant Professor in the Department of Classics at the University of Toronto. Thank you for your time. Thank you, actually. Thanks very much.